my first question is, where and how was the 11 project born? Well, the 11 project was born in a cinema, which I think is probably one of the best places for a storytelling concept to come from. And it, um, it was in a cinema in Perth where I used to live, which is in West Australia. And I was there with a friend of mine and we were watching these two films back to back, Kuwana Skwatsky and Kuwana Skwatsky, which are these really provocative, thought provoking, meditative films, which have contrasting images and ideas played to Philip Glass music. And you can kind of really get lost in the whole experience, um, which it happened to me and I guess Whilst I was watching this film, my mind was kind of ticking over and I was thinking about um, what if this was all happening on the planet at the same time and, you know, what would it mean if someone was eating hamburgers, um, you know, at the same time as someone who was starving and what does that mean? What's kind of the connection that unites people? So um, I guess my mind just came up with this idea, which was quintessentially being able to explore the world in one day, you know, during that 24-hour period. Um, so I actually ended up leaving the cinema, ran to the foyer, grabbed whatever scrap piece of paper, I think I ended up finding a serviette, and started writing down the concept of a day in the life of the world, but not just told by um, professionals, but actually told by individuals, because I really believe that only we truly know what goes on in our lives behind closed doors. And so I guess I really wanted to explore that concept. So the world being told by the people, not just necessarily by, I guess, documentary makers who come in, tell a story and leave. It's like actually the opportunity for people to give us true insight into what their lives are like. So what is it actually? What is the, the project made of? In terms of the, in is, terms of the concept? Yes. What, what will it be? What will happen on the 11th of November of this year? Yeah, cool. Well, I guess the 11-11 project concept is that um, from midnight to midnight, yeah, on the 11th of November, the state's 11-11-11, and we don't see it as 11s. We see it as lots of ones, lots of ones coming together, lots of individuals coming together on this special date. So basically what we've done is we've asked people all around the world to have access to any recording device to capture their lives using film, photography, music, sound and text. So it's their lives t um, told by them and they're you know, sharing with us their stories. Um, and then from that, we're gonna take all of that created content and turn it into a feature length documentary film, a photographic book and a world music collection. What's gonna happen on the 11th of November? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I I think if anything we, we've, we've learned um, in 2011 is that anything and everything is possible. You know, whether that's the tragedy of, um, you know, tsunamis and earthquakes, um, you know, to revolutions, to royal weddings. I mean, this year's been really eventful. And even though, you know, we know there's some definitive things that are going to happen on the 11th of November. For instance, in certain countries, it's Armistice Day. In other countries, it's Halloween. In other countries, it's like International Singles Day. So there's lots of events we know that are happening around the world, whether it's um, people have written into us and telling us that they're getting married. But if anything we've learned is that life is completely unpredictable and that as much as we can plan, um, the truth is I don't, I don't know what we're going to get. And that's the most exciting and the most scary part of our project is the world will unveil itself however it's meant to unveil us, you know, itself to us and we'll, you know, we're excited recipients of these stories and, you know, I, for me, just that idea of, it's like opening up a gift, um, discovering what people wanted to share with us and tell us um, and, and, and share with us what's going on in their lives. Um, in what way is the, at least, video documentary of the project different from what YouTube did with uh, Life in a Day? Well, our project is um, a little bit different to YouTube's Life in a Day um, for a few reasons. One, um, firstly, I must say that I saw YouTube's Life in a Day and I think it's a really beautiful film and I think the filmmakers, Scott McDonald and Ridley Scott, did a great job. Um, and in a way, I was very grateful for them to have made that project um, because it really gave me an opportunity to almost pilot the idea and see if it was going to work. So I guess um, 
you know, so I guess it, to a certain extent, um, having the YouTube um, video was an advantage to us. So I guess, um, you know, there are a few differences between the 1111 project and, um, you know, YouTube's life in a day. Um, one of them being the fact that our project's more inclusive. Um, because of US sanctions, um, certain people from certain countries weren't allowed to participate in the YouTube project. So if you came from Cuba or if you came from, um, I'm just trying to make sure I don't mess up which countries, <laughs> you know, if you came from Cuba, I think if you came from Iran, if you came from anyone who was considered, I think there were about 13 countries that weren't allowed to participate um, because for political reasons. And for me, that really concerned me as a storyteller because the objective really is to hear all stories. And so because our project's not political, we don't mind where you come from, we just actually want to hear stories. So that's one of the reasons. Um, secondly, our project's not for profit. So, um, you know, instead of it, um, you know, money going back into a big organization, our money's being split amongst um, different charities. So the whole idea was not only are people coming together to contribute to something meaningful, the, the actual content that we create will go back to feed into charity. So we actually will be able to financially support some amazing organizations that are doing wonderful things. So it, it wasn't just a kind of a social experiment. It actually has some practical, positive outcomes. And I guess thirdly, and this, um, I don't know if this was or wasn't an issue for the filmmakers who were making Life in a Day, but um, I could see when I watched the film, I, I felt in a way that perhaps their voices might have been restricted because they were representing an organization like YouTube. Um, you know, there aren't really any logos. Um, they don't make any strong political statements. There's no, it, in no way was particularly controversial. And even though it's a magnificent film to watch, and you know, as, I, um, as I've acknowledged, I think Kevin MacDonald and, and, and Ridley Scott did such a fantastic job at putting all of that together, um, I kind of felt that the, in terms of having something to say, in terms of the story, that was something missing. And I think it's, it might be because at the end of the day, it was a YouTube project. And with that comes the representation of a big organization. Where we're a grassroots organization, we, we don't, we're, our fingers, you know, our hands aren't tied. We're just looking to tell stories and to provoke ideas and concepts. And so it's not, for us, it's not just a, um, a you know, a YouTube experiment. What it is for us is an opportunity to explore humanity and to, to perhaps ask some questions and provoke some thoughts that might not be possible in any other space. So actually exploring freedom of speech through storytelling. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's why we're not just partnered with YouTube. I mean, you can put up your video content anywhere um, as long as it has a URL. Okay. Um, you know, then then it's possible for us to be able to actually watch it and access it. So we completely support the idea of freedom of speech um, and are excited by that. And I think it's about empowering individuals and saying, you know what, this is the day where we provide an opportunity for all voices to be heard and to kind of almost create an egalitarian space that we will watch your video as seriously as we'll watch you know, um, the president's video or celebrity's video. Um, you know, no one gets special treatment. We're just interested in finding um, authentic, honest representations of what's going on in the world. So how many countries have been uh, involved in the project? So we currently um, have 152 countries on board, which is great. Um, and we are determined in the next uh, few days leading up to the 1111 project to get every country in the world um, you know, involved. So if you happen to know someone in North Korea, <laughs> which, <laughs> which, which is one of the countries that you know, we're still trying to, to get traction in, we've actually put up the countries that we're looking for on our Facebook page because I guess what we're hoping is as, as much as we've tried our absolute best to get out there in the world, um, we know that it's really the communities that can help. Um, so in the last couple of days when we did that, I've received emails from people going, oh, I know someone in Bhutan or I know someone in, in you know, Namibia and slowly but surely um, the community is helping us to get that project and I guess we're continuously asking people to help spread the word because we cannot do this on our own. The world is an enormous place and just because you put stuff on the internet doesn't necessarily mean it gets seen or heard. Okay, so what does one have to do to participate? 
Well, it's really easy. Um, if you want to participate in the 1111 project, um, first things first is um, go to our website and register. You don't have to register, but if you do register, it means that we can send you directly information that you will need on the day. So it's just super handy to be able to do that. Um, secondly, the, we've provided with, um, people with 11 topics, and these are guidelines just to kind of provoke um, or inspire ideas. When I went to people saying, hey, you know, we really want to see what your life is like and we really want to, um, you know, we really want you to film or photograph it or record it. Um, most people kind of freaked out by the idea of just having a blank canvas. They understood that they needed to do something during that 24 hours, but they weren't exactly sure what to do. And I think part of it came from the fear of not doing it correctly. So firstly, we want to tell people there's no way you can mess up as provided that you actually record something during on the 11th of November, that's the 2011, <laughs> that's the most important part. Um, what you film and how you film, we're less concerned about. But so um, that people didn't have to feel um, unsure or, or, not, uh, or not confident in terms of what we were looking for, we've given the community 11 topics which are basically there to inspire them. Um, so. We suggest people uh, see them more as guidelines and open to interpretation. So some of those um, topics include words like play or love or um, routine, which everyone can inter interpret in their own way. Um, and we also have, I guess, uh, more provocative uh, words like darkness or heartbreak. So that wasn't just like the sunshine, hug fest, look how happy we are. Um, we kind of wanted to explore, I guess, the darkness of humanity, but to some people darkness is beauty. So I guess allowing people to really become as creative as they, um, as they want to be with the topics. And for me as a storyteller, it um, allows me to have a little bit of control in terms of what I'll be getting on the day. For instance, one of the words is beginnings. Um, whether beginnings is you getting up in the morning or the beginning of a relationship or a sun rising, whatever beginnings is to you, it has a certain energy, it has a start, it has, an, you know, it has that, that thing that I guess allows me as a storyteller to know that that's a lift off, a, a moment that I can kind of jump in terms of energy in, in, in the production. And so I'm not going to tell you what you need to record. I'm totally open to what you're going to record, um, but I guess I'm just kind of saying, hey, maybe, maybe you should think in this direction or in that direction, and whatever it means to you, however it means to you, that's kind of what I'm keen to find out. So when will the documentary, the book, uh, the, uh, the compilation, when will all of this be ready and published? Well, the biggest um, deadline that we have is uh, for the documentary film which is going to be released on the 21st of September next year, which is International Day of Peace. Um, and how it's going to be released is we're going to have 5,000 screenings around the world on the same day um, that we're offering to the community for free. You won't be watching it online because we actually want people to get out of their houses and actually be a part of the community. So. Um, you know, whether that's in town halls or universities or religious centers, we wanted to get people to come together and gather and watch it. So it's really a film to bring people together and it's, it's by the people for the people. So we didn't want it to be an isolated audience experience. So, um, so make sure you, you know, keep the 21st of September free next year. That's, I think, a suitable amount of notice. Here in Australia, um, town, uh, Sydney Town Hall um, have provided us with a space and in Melbourne, which is another city here, there's a giant square with one of those huge big urban screens and, um, you know, they're having a screening there and so, um, but we're, you know, in order to have a screening, you have to have a minimum of 100 people be able to come to your screening and if, you know, people who are watching this and listening to this go, Oh, actually maybe my university could host it or I, I look after a library or I look at, you know I have a community center then we totally would love to hear from people the whole idea is to bring communities together and for us all to explore it um, and then post that date you know the DVDs and the books and the album will be available for people to purchase and it's the, as I mentioned before it's the money from those sales that will go directly to our charity partners so it's our screening's our gift to you for helping us put together this film and supplying us with content. And then I guess if people want to support more in terms of um, 
giving uh, practical financial assistance to um, our charity partners and supporting what we do, then we encourage them to go online and actually purchase what we've created. Uh, could you name uh, a few of your charity partners? So, um, you know, I spent a lot of time making sure that we picked uh, charity organisations that not only had wonderful reputations, um, but also um, fulfilled two main objectives. Um, one, that when you give money to these charities, the majority of the money you give them actually goes to the cause that they're trying to support. I think people are exceptionally cynical. We found in Australia, you know, people give money to charities and find out you give one dollar and only five cents goes to the person who needs it, and 95 cents goes to administration. So we've made sure, we've done a lot of homework to make sure the majority, we're talking like 80, 90% of the money actually goes to the people who need it. Um, you know, that was um, something that was really, really um, important to us. Um, and also that they were aligned with the UN Millennium Development Goals. So, um, you know, the United Nations came up with these outstanding goals. Um, that would benefit all people, such as you know, ensuring women didn't die in childbirth, or environmental sustainability, or um, helping to ensure people didn't die from preventable diseases. We thought these Millennium Development Goals would benefit all people, so we basically found charities aligned with them. So, um, for example, the Environmental Sustainability, we're um, partnered with the World Wildlife Fund. Um, for um, children mortality, we're partnered with Save the Children. Uh, for gender equality, we're partnered with um, The Hunger Project, which is an organization that focuses on empowering women to um, help their communities get out of poverty. Um, Opportunity International, which um, aligns with the idea of um, combating poverty, basically does uh, microfinancing. So it's, we really try to find organizations that um, not only had amazing reputations um, and were, were actually able to achieve it, but um, that we could see that everyone in one way or another would benefit from having these community organizations supported. Um, I invite everyone who sees this video to participate in the 1111 project and visit, of course, 1111project.com which is the number and then the name, 11, actually. And uh, Danielle, thank you very much for being with us today and for your time. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing what everyone records on the 11th.